Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Putin and Erdogan meet Raisi in Tehran. Axis of good emerges. Big week, people. Uh, we're going to start with a little recap of the, the ancient names and characters involved. Uh, Ezekiel 38 verses 1 through 6, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush and Putter with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth the Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you. So there's the happy threesome. Putin, Raisi, and Erdogan from left to right in Tehran and just recap, you know, and effectively once you get a grasp of the ancient names in the modern day countries, this is a very easy read, easy to understand. And it reads like today's headlines and I'll show that. Um, and I suppose before we get too deep into this, I know most of the people, the majority of the people who read this, follow this, listen to this are believers in what the Bible says, believers in Christ. I would encourage you to share this or talk with this about those who do not and do it with a spirit of grace and uh, gentleness and encouragement and just appeal to their sense of curiosity. Because I'll tell you what, when you read this prophecy and you look what's going on, especially after what happened today, you can't tell me things aren't falling into place. Uh, holy cow, I don't know what to tell you, but on with the characters, Gog of Magog listed in uh, the outset of Ezekiel. That's leader. That's a leader of modern day Russia. Uh, Meshach, Tubal, Beth the Garma, Gomer. Those ancient names are essentially modern day Turkey. Ancient Persia, modern day Iran. And Ezekiel 38's gang met together this week in Tehran, Iran. And the nations are molding a political, economic, and military alliance. And there's, it, you can't deny it. You just can't deny it. And this is a quote from the Iranian foreign minister, Hossein A. I'm not even going to try to say that. Uh, and I'm going to quote Hossein. Iran, center of dynamic diplomacy. Implied meetings will develop economic cooperation, focus on security of the region via political solution, and ensure food security. Those are the stated goals of this week's meetings. So we're just going to do an outline of, of what's happened. And I just picked the, picked the low-hanging fruit on this deal. This thing is loaded with all kinds of stuff. Links are provided. Uh, for those of you who want to dig in, read a little bit more. There's so much going on behind the scenes, but these are the main headlines. These are the main themes, the outcomes of the meetings that have taken place this week in Tehran with Russia and Turkey and Iran. So we're going to first take a look at Turkish President Recep Erdogan. He's getting off the plane and walking down the red carpet. Now, mind you, uh, this is the viewpoint of a medical rehab professional who's watching this guy walk with over 30 years of experience of watching this stuff. His gait's a bit unsteady, slow, and frankly, he uses all the carpet between the yellow lines, and this is not the look of a fit and healthy man. And so now you can click on this. Um, I got links provided for all of this stuff uh, from the webpage from paulthepoke.com, and also the links will be provided for those of you who are following on YouTube. Uh, but this is from Jason Brodsky. I follow him on Twitter. And we're going to watch Erdogan. I'm going to provide some commentary. The first thing I want everybody to notice is just look how far apart his feet are. 
and they use the wide angle lens. They're not about to focus on him up close because he is staring straight down, watching every single step. And he had a little little stumble right there. They do get a little closer, but you can see he's looking. Oop, I think I'll take a look up, almost made it. But the other thing we're going to take a look at is how long it takes for him to walk the length of the red carpet. Now, he's going to start walking here at about 36 seconds. And then also pay attention to how much he wobbles back and forth between the yellow lines. And again, they're going to focus on this from a distance. Now, we're kind of wandering over there toward the right side, his right side. And he is far from moving quickly. And if you'll notice in about the first 10 seconds, he only went about 10 feet. Uh, a little wobble there to the left. He's got somebody there to his left to kind of promote him, one behind him, just in case something happens. They've been watching President Biden. They know how to stage these types of things a little better than we do. Uh, but there, oh, a little wobble over there to the right. Bring it back to the middle. Keep in mind, he's been walking since 36 seconds. Wobble back to the left. And we are coming up on 50 seconds of walking and the pace is very slow. They also are smart enough to get some people to kind of protect this. See, he's still got his head down and looking, looking down at his feet and not ahead when he's walking. If you think about it, most of us, we just walk and we're not looking down. But you get a really good idea too. Uh, watch everybody close in. Let's not watch him how he goes up the steps. But again, started at 36 seconds, and he's been at this for over a minute now. Um, and re rewatch it again. I've watched it two or three times, analyzed it, broke it down. Um, but those are some things that I see with that. He's not, he's not healthy. I don't know what's going on with him. I've heard rumors of heart cardiac conditions. Don't know the answer, but nonetheless, that was, uh, president Erdogan making it into Iran uh, last evening. And then we also have uh, Russian President Putin arrives and the headlines are questioning his health with a limp right arm. He's limping as he walks now, but his gait does look better than Erdogan. He's a little quicker, uh, <laughs> looks, looks a little more robust. And we're going to take a look at his gait because that's what the press is doing. This is from Daily Mail. Dot co.uk out of the united kingdom and they start in that's how they start out they go in right after how he presents himself and they also are of the opinion he has parkinson's if i was uh that i'm not a diagnostician i can't make that medical diagnosis but i would recommend him to a neurologist and present to the neurologist uh, this mr putin is presenting signs and symptoms consistent with parkinson's and just list them off. Shuffled gait, right-sided impairment, left side of his brain's probably been affected. Here he goes. We're going to get this. This is like a little 10-second repeat. Watch the right side of his body. Notice how the left arm swings. The right arm stays limp at his side. Also, when you watch him walk, the stride of the left is much longer than the stride of the right. And he's trying to overcompensate that and look like a tough guy when the reality of it is he's showing off that the right side of his body is the weak side of his body. So he does most likely, it would appear to have something going on in the left side of his brain, left side of the brain affects right side of the body. Uh, symptoms, other things he has shown in the past, clenching a desk with his right hand. I suspect possibly a little bit of drooling from the right side of the lips. He does some things that has shown me that in the past as well, which would be consistent with Parkinson's like symptoms. So again, I'm not diagnosing him I'm just telling you what he looks like. He may not be, I could be wrong about that. So, um, at any rate, the press is locked in on him. Uh, and as he, uh, shows up, Russian Yevgeny Popov, he proclaimed on Russian TV the alliance between Russia and Iran, the axis of good. So there you have it. Good is showing up in Tehran. Uh, so what were they doing in Tehran? So the first thing they were talking about, allegedly, is the possibility of drone purchases from the Iranians. And we're going to 
scour down on some of this, you can get an idea where, um, I guess Russian people, Russian diplomats have been going to Iran back in the early part of June. And there we go. A Russian delegation visited an Iranian airfield on June 8 and July 5 to inspect drones, which could be used to direct artillery fire and destroy Ukrainian military hardware. Now that's per the White House. And they're not the only one. The White House is not the only one who's who's saying this. Um, here's a picture of some Iranian army launches a drone carrying a missile. Russia expected to receive a shipment. And then also this is an underground facility, which Iran's been thumping their chest pretty good about this, showing off this underground facility where they build their drones, put their drones in for storage. It's very deep, the Iranians are telling us. Impervious to bunker busters is what we're hearing. We'll see. I don't know. Um, but it looks like it would appear that one of the purposes of this meeting was for President Putin to go to Iran and secure some uh, drones um, as part of the deal. So, and again, if you want to break this down, dailymail.co.uk, Putin arrives, Iran looks, create new anti-West alliance, secure Tehran's drones. And this is the article. There's a picture of him and Erdogan shaking hands. I think that's from earlier. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of that. It's a good read. Lots of pictures. We'll go over some of the main figures here. This is Putin and Raisi, president of Iran. There they go. Look at him looking all happy. Uh, petroleum minister. We're going to get into that. That's going to be a big deal. Uh, Iranian petroleum minister. So... That's what's been taking place in Tehran. Um, also, there was, an, there was a statement on what's taking place in Syria at Astana Format Summit. And this is from RT. This is Russian state-affiliated media. I'd like to thank Twitter for pointing that out to us. Don't know we would have figured that out without their assistance, that this is Russia's propaganda mouthpiece. Uh, Checkmate likes to call it smooth propaganda. So this is very sophisticated propaganda we receive from the Russians. And this is what they have to say about Syria. Efforts by Russia, Iran, and Turkey to resolve Syrian crisis are generally effective. So what we've been watching take place for the past 11 years, as they stated, is effective crisis management <laughs> by these three. Still going on, but it's effective. Uh, the three nations are set to take measures to promote a dialogue within Syria. So we're going to talk about it a little more and continue to bomb the Kurds and anybody who disagrees with um, with Assad. Uh, although Erdogan, he, he doesn't like Assad, so this is going to be interesting. It has been interesting, will continue to be interesting. Because you got Russia and Iran are pro-Assad. Uh, Erdogan and Turkey, not so much. But... Uh, None of those groups like the Kurds. So historically, the Iranians kicked the Kurds out. They didn't want them in their country. Erdogan thinks the Kurds are terrorists. So some of them are in northern Syria, northern Iraq. And uh, any presence of terror groups, that would be the Kurds or ISIS or whoever gets in the way of, uh, of Assad must be eradicated. So that's an outflow of some of the meetings that took place. Uh, this is a big one right here. Russian energy giant Gazprom has signed a $40 billion deal with Iran. Also remember in the backdrop of this, this was completed in the face of Western sanctions against Russia in their invasion of Ukraine. Iran is also under sanctions from the West. Now let's just be honest, these sanctions from the West have completely backfired in their intention. They thought it would... Uh, you know, cause Russia to struggle. Their currency has done nothing but go up and they have uh, delivered more energy to the East, uh, to India and China. That's where those, that's where the oil and gas is going. It's going to India and China. And as a reminder between those, those two countries, what is it? Roughly 35 to 40% of the population <coughs> of planet earth is between those two countries. 
pushing 1.8 billion people in each country for a total of 3.6 of nearly 8 billion people. So Russia is shipping oil and gas east, and so will Iran. They will be shipping it east. This MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, will be the largest foreign investment in the history of Iran's oil industry, as it will lead to an investment of several tens of billions of dollars of Russian investment in Iran's oil and gas field. Now, I find this funny. They're still talking dollars. They need to get their act together and start talking rubles. I'm sure Putin will get that straight with them. Um, you know, eventually these folks are going to work to get away from the dollar. And they're already hinting at using rubles, Russian rubles, or Chinese yuan, or a basket of currencies. They're talking about the BRICS. So BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China um, countries. Uh, going back to the quote from Iran's Tasneem news agency, Iran and Russia have a total of 70 trillion cubic meters of gas reserves, which is 30% of the world's gas reserves. Therefore, these two countries play a very important role in ensuring the world's energy sustainability. Now, the part that gets my attention is these two jokers have 30% of the world's gas reserves. And if you don't think they can manipulate markets with 30% of the world's gas, you got another thing coming. And they're already, Russia is already showing what they are willing to do to Europe with what control they have over uh, those gas reserves. Um, and also today, Gazprom, this same Russian energy giant, stated it will not be able to deliver natural gas to a significant European customer due to an act of God. So now we've invoked God into this, and the problem is, is that uh, an act of God is keeping Russia from delivering natural gas to a European customer. Also, I guess Russia shut down pipelines of gas delivery uh, as well this week uh, because of scheduled maintenance, I also heard was as a reason. I suspect that maintenance will not get completed anytime soon due to, you know, parts, labor. I'm sure they can come up with several for several different types of reasons why. Um, if you want to check that out, provide a link at cnbc.com. Russians Gazprom declare the force majeure act of God on some gas supplies to Europe. Um, now, Russia and Turkey, and this is where Turkey comes into this, they control the flow of ships in and out of the Black Sea. And as I understand it right now, there are over 130 ships that are believed to be blocked in the Black Sea with grain. So Russia and Turkey are looking to sign a deal regarding the distribution of grain, food, from Ukraine through the Black Sea, through the Dardanelles Straits, the Bosphorus Fates, into the Mediterranean. Uh, this is from Turkish Defense Minister Halusi Akar. An agreement was reached on a plan, general principles for shipping grain and food products. A meeting on this within the week is probable, and then he had some other frankly pointless quotes that said, we're going to do it. Got a few details we got an iron out, but doesn't see any reason why it couldn't happen within the next week. Uh, also saw some comments that hinted toward this being signed as well uh, at this conference between uh, Russia, Turkey, and Iran. If you go back to the original statement from one of the Iranian ministers, it would seem that this is on the table because they talk and they they mentioned what was it food food security up here at the very at the very top of this. Um, yeah, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein A. Focus on the security of the region via political solu solution and ensure food security. That was one of the uh, goals of this meeting between these three folks, three countries. Um, and then also earlier in the week, we, we had this prior to the onset of these three getting together. 
Uh, this is from Times of Israel. Top Iranian official boasts Iran has technical ability to manufacture nuclear bomb. And this is from this is a quote from Kamal Karazi, head of Iran's Strategic Council on Foreign Relations. And I quote. It's no secret that we have the technical capabilities to manufacture a nuclear bomb, but we have no decision to do so. <clears throat> Peaceful purposes, of course, I'm sure. In a few days, we were able to enrich uranium up to 60%, and we can easily produce 90% enriched uranium. And again, that's Kamal Karazi, head of Iran's Strategic Council on foreign relations. And if you want to read more into that, the Times of Israel goes into some detail about the history of this little, uh, oh, I guess, trip to develop a nuclear bomb. And put something out earlier. I think Checkmate had put something out earlier in the weekend, a couple of days ago, talking about, you know, just the chatter. If you look at some of the things coming out of media from Israel, and the way uh, President Biden's trip to the Middle East went, those folks in the Middle East need have a pretty good understanding. They're going to have to go it alone against this group. Uh, and they're willing to do it, uh, so they say on paper. Uh, Ezekiel says something different. And he wrote this over 2,600 years ago. And, and at the core of all of this stuff, Economic reasons, economic purposes. And we get that from Ezekiel 38, verses 10 through 15. Thus says the Lord God, on that day, thoughts will come into your mind. That's Gog of Magog, leader of Russia. You will devise an evil scheme and say, I will go against the land of unwalled villages. Now, has that happened yet? Or maybe, I don't know. Is Putin that guy? I don't know. But at some point, the leader of Russia will decide to, you know what? Let's go get them. I will fall upon the quiet people who dwell security, all of them dwelling without walls. You could argue that hasn't happened yet. <coughs> Israel has walls all over the place, separating them from the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. No bars, no gates. Conjecture here makes me wonder at some point in the future as part of some peace agreement that all those walls will come down. Uh, that would be incredible to see that happen if it happens. Uh, some folks in Israel today consider them to be a, a nation or their homes without bars and gates. Uh, interesting, but, the, but the, at the core of it, it's to seize spoil and carry off plunder, to turn your hand against the waste places that are now inhabited. And that's modern day Israel. It was a waste place until they showed up in the 20th century. And now... People were gathered from the nations. They continue to come back from all around the world after they were dispersed, 70 AD. They've acquired livestock, goods, some of the most productive uh, dairy cattle on the planet. Well, they are the most productive dairy uh, cattle on the planet coming out of Israel. They dwell at the center of the earth as God sees it. Sheba and Dedan, modern day Saudi Arabia, and merchants of Tarshish, you could almost make a very strong case for we saw Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish in the West. The United States and its leaders will say, have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your host to carry off plunder, to carry away silver and gold, take away livestock and goods, to seize great spoil? And the great spoil sits off the coast of the Mediterranean, out in the Mediterranean Sea. And probably going to do something on that this weekend. Uh, the leader of Hezbollah, Nasrallah, is ready to go to war with Israel over the Karish oil fields. Uh, he claims it's disputed territory. It's not. Uh, and it makes me wonder, too, you know, if that's going to be something that Russia eventually will stick its nose in on behalf of Lebanon, Hezbollah, Hezbollah which is an Iranian proxy. Um, and get involved seriously into Israeli Eastern Mediterranean gas. Cause that's the only thing that keeps, uh, Russia from an absolute monopoly and controlling 
the flow of energy and gas to Western Europe is Israel. And Israel has recently signed contracts to ship oil, or I'm sorry, ship natural gas to Egypt, where they will liquefy it, put it on ships, and send it to Western Europe. And so we are watching this. It would appear we are watching this happen. Um, and if you read further, um, again, once you understand who the ancient names are, this this reads like today's press. Um and when push comes to shove, do you really think the Saudis are going to go stick their nose in there or these Gulf states who have these agreements under the Abraham Accords? Do you really think they're going to go to bat militarily for Israel against Russia, Turkey, Iran, and their proxies? Do you really think that's going to happen just knowing what you're watching going on in the world today? I don't. And that's what Ezekiel said over 2,600 years ago. And so, again, would encourage people, and, and most of this I understand I'm preaching to the choir in that sense, but if you have friends who are unsure about this, not quite sure about this, don't believe it, think it's a bunch of hogwash, or think it's a, a little book of stories. I've heard that. I can't tell you how many times. Oh, it's just a cute little book of stories. Tell some little moral platitude. Show them. Here's the link. Click on it, Ezekiel 38, and read it. Encourage them to read it. Send them to this website. Send them to other people who are doing some things similar to this. Um, we're getting close, people. That's all I know to tell you. So appreciate y'all taking the time today. Uh, please feel free to share this with others at paulthepoke.com. Uh, we'll probably likely have something else coming up this weekend. There are all kinds of other things that are happening uh, around the world they kind of tie into this loosely, but there are some big ticket news items happening that we'll be reporting on. Probably going to get up with uh, Checkmate, do a series or do a, uh, a Watchman this weekend. If he has the time and availability, I'm going to reach out to him. Uh, if you're interested in these things, please feel free to uh, type in your email address right here. Hit subscribe. You'll get a notification every time we put something out. It's been a busy week. Things look to be picking up. And if you're interested in any of these categories, this one will be categorized under Ezekiel 38 and 39. Also will be categorized under uh, Persia, Elam, Iran, Prophecy. And it's a trend update. So, you know, we're coming up on 12 years of doing this. So really appreciate everybody's support and encouragement. Please feel free to share with others. It would appear this is winding down and it is getting close or it's getting closer. Now, how long it takes for all this to come to pass, I don't know. I don't know what God's plan is. Just know it's going to happen at some point. And we got some dominoes being set up. Heard a quote today. I thought it was a pretty good one. Uh, you know, people make the comment. It's like the world is falling apart or the world's breaking apart. We've lost control, and the reality of it is things are being put into place as God sees it. And I think we need to remember that. He is in charge. He knows what's going to happen. And uh, when this does go down, <clears throat> these folks are going to be taken out by a pretty good-sized storm. They're going to turn on each other. We're going to have some uh, some infighting. We're going to have hailstones. Um uh, Arguably a pretty good storm. Uh, Gog, the leader, he's going he's gonna to perish and he's going to be buried in Israel forever. A little memorial set up for him. And all these weapons that are coming are going to get smoked. So not going to end well for you boys, but keep planning. I'll take the home team. Anyway, talk to you all later. Have a good one. Bye.